Hello students, today we are going to discuss about nutrition, biology class 10, first lesson nutrition. Okay, so in this lesson we are going to discuss the first topic, nutrition. What is nutrition? So it is a process by which organisms ingest, means taking food, digest the food and absorb the nutrients food then dispose the waste at the end of process, right? So ingest ingest and digest and absorb the nutrients and then disposes the disposes at the end process right so here nutrition is here we have two different types of nutrition first one is autotrophic nutrition heterotrophic nutrition right autotrophic nutrition means it is a type of nutrition in which organisms prepare their own food is called autotrophic nutrition right so only uh, green plants are are there which comes under autotrophic nutrition next uh, heterotrophic nutrition uh, nutrition in which organisms depend on other for their food requirements is called heterotrophic nutrition except plant plants remaining all organisms comes under this group human beings animals all this comes under heterotrophic nutrition right so in heterotrophic nutrition also so we have three different types uh, parasitic nutrition halozoic holozoic nutrition and saprophytes right parasitic nutrition uh, this one we know regularly we this listen uh, we hear this word right so it is one type of nutrition in which an organism derives derives it in its food from the body of another living organism without killing it right some example for uh, uh, parasitic nutrition uh, parasites are tapeworms cascata plant lice right lice everyone know uh, those also comes under parasitic nutrition leeches tapeworms roundworms and ticks all this comes under parasitic nutrition next uh, saprophytes Saprophytes, uh, one more type of saprophytic nutrition means it is one more type of nutrition in which organisms obtain its food from the decaying organic matter of dead plants and animals on rotten food. So before uh, taking nutrients from the uh, dead bodies, they decay the matter and uh, then break down the molecules. After that, they absorb the nutrients from the dead organisms or dead plants. That type of nutrition is called sap, uh, saprophytic nutrition. Here, mushrooms, mold, yeast comes under this group. Okay. Next, uh, halozoic nutrition. Uh, remaining all my, so which animal take food in the form of solid? Then it uh, digests that food, then absorb the nutrients from the food and expel the waste process, uh, waste from the body. That uh, whichever organism is having that process is called uh, those organisms comes under this holozoic nutrition all animals human beings comes under this group which they take food in the form of solid and they digest the food then absorb the nutrients from the food and dispose the waste at the end process right that is holozoic nutrition next here we have definitions for autotrophic nutrition if you want you can write type of nutrition in which organisms prepare their own food is called autotrophic nutrition example only plants green plants green plants next heterotrophic nutrition the type of nutrition in which organisms depend on other for their food requirements is called heterotrophic nutrition right next in this heterotrophic nutrition we have three uh, classification right parasitic nutrition it is a type of nutrition in which organisms derives its food from the body of another living organisms without killing it right tapeworms and uh, cascata plant lice they take directly absorb the nutrients from the another organism body right so it suck the blood from the human being then it live on them leeches also suck the blood which are in that blood they get all the nut required nutrients right tapeworms ticks all this comes under parasitic nutrition then saprophytic nutrition 
it is a type of nutrition in which organisms obtain its food from decaying organic matter of dead plants animals or rotten food etc right so in saprophytic nutrition before uh, taking uh, absorbing nutrients from the uh, de decaying matter they, they decompose it or break down the molecules outside the outside their body right then after breaking down molecules they absorb the nutrients right so molds yeast mushrooms under comes under this group, right next uh, holozoic nutrition Holozoic nutrition means feeding on solid food which may be plant product or animal product and so in this process they take the food in the form of solid, they digest the food, then absorb the nutrients food from the food, then uh, expel the waste from their bodies. So, so uh, whichever organisms having this type of nutrition comes under holozoic, right. Next uh, photosynthesis, okay. We know only green plants perform this photosynthesis, right? So, it is a process by which pla plants build up complex organic molecules from simple and inorganic ones. Simple inorganic means they use uh, water and uh, carbon dioxide from the, they take water from earth and uh, carbon dioxide from atmosphere. So, using these two and in the presence of sunlight, using sunlight as, a, as an energy source right so they are preparing their own food right so that is called photosynthesis process here balanced equation of photosynthesis is given very important 6 co2 plus 12 h2o in the presence of sunlight sunlight is mandatory and uh, site where it is happening it's uh, chlorophyll is a part of plant which is filled with the uh, chlorophyll right so there is there it is taking process and the end products are starch it is starch basic material prepared in plants starch there there onwards they uh, converted into lipids carbohydrates whatever remaining all converted into vitamins or the other. so basic material prepared at first at first stage is starch only then uh, water vapor it is uh, if it, it is released into the atmosphere through stomata and it releases six molecules of oxygen into the atmosphere right this equation was given by cb neil okay cb neil next so these are the uh, important things required for the plant to prepare their own food so carbon dioxide is mandatory without carbon dioxide it cannot prepare food Water also important. So if you don't give water for a plant for three to four days, the plant will die, right? So water is mandatory for the plant. Sunlight is mandatory and chlorophyll. Only green plants will perform the photosynthesis process. Next, so end products are starch, right? And uh, oxygen, water vapor. Okay. Here we have uh, some lab activities related to photosynthesis. First lab activity is, is uh, to test the presence of, of the starch. Is it really preparing starch? So what, whatever we are discussing every time, it, uh, it, uh, during photosynthesis, it prepares starch, right? So here we are going to test, is it really producing starch, right? So for this, we need a, uh, take a leaf from a plant which is well exposed to sun, right? So, if, you exp uh, if that plant is exposed to sun, then only it will prepare starch in the leaf, right? So, for that reason, we are uh, using this word, exposed to sun. Then, plug the leaf from the plant. Then, boil, in, boil the leaf in water first. Then, transfer the leaf into this, uh, into a test tube, which is containing methylated spirit. Then, uh, heat in the uh, water bath. Right, you should not heat it directly. Okay, so it should be heated in the water bath. Right, what will happen uh, if you heat it? So, this whatever chlorophyll present in the leaf will dissolve in the methylated spirit. So, in this spirit, chlorophyll is dissolving, means slowly, slowly, green color is removed from the leaf. Then after some time, complete leaf turns into pale yellow color or pale white, we can say, right? Now, take the 
leaf carefully using forceps then spread in the petri dish okay spread it in the petri dish right now apply tincture iodine to this solid, uh, leaf right next this leaf, leaf turns to after uh, uh, applying of iodine leaf turns into blue black right so when presence of starch there leaf turns into blue black okay so by this we can say that starch is present in that leaf means during photosynthesis starch is prepared in the leaf okay so that is our first lab activity which is there in our lesson okay next one is co2 is prepared during photosynthesis uh, sorry is co2 is re really required for the plant is it necessary compulsory right to check that we have one lab activity is that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis so it was invented by mole right so it is also known as mole's half leaf experiment okay mole's half leaf experiment right so here take a potted uh, plant uh, select one a leaf which is somewhat longer right take one more jar one jar right so in this you add potassium hydroxide koh right so what is the importance of koh is here koh absorbs the carbon dioxide present around it right now what i am doing is after adding koh to the jar uh, i am inserting the leaf and uh, closing the so first thing i am cutting my rubber cork in two pieces right so it is now in two parts so between these two parts i am placing my leaf then uh, carefully closing the jar right using that cork next what will happen this koh absorbs the carbon dioxide present within the jar why because it is closed now half of the leaf is leaf is outside of the bottle and uh, half of the leaf is inside the bottle right next so if you observe here this half portion is getting carbon dioxide so whatever portion present in the inside the bottle is not getting the, the there is no carbon dioxide for this inside portion clear now leave this uh, leave this potted plant and uh, this uh, arrangement in sunlight for four to five hours right after that what we have to do pluck out this leaf right pluck out this leaf again place your leaf in uh, boil that leaf in water then transfer that leaf into the methylated spirit then heat it uh, place it in a water bath heat it for some time slowly slowly uh, green color is removed from the means chlorophyll is dissolving in this spirit right methylated spirit then using brushes spread this leaf in a petri dish add tincture iodine to the solution what you will observe is so half of the leaf is uh, will half of the leaf will turn into bluish black okay then remaining will be uh, pale white right so whenever you are uh, boiling the leaf in spirit that turns to pale white okay because of removal of chlorophyll now only half portion is converted into blue black means this portion only having starch this portion in this portion of the leaf is there is no starch here right so from this what you are concluding co2 carbon dioxide is necessary for the photosynthesis right so wherever they uh, this portion is within the jar right there is no carbon dioxide because of absence of carbon dioxide so this part is not able to prepare the food even though it is getting sunlight directly okay next we have one more lab activity that uh, is oxygen produced during photosynthesis right to observe oxygen is evolved during photosynthesis here uh, take an hadrilla plant uh, it is an aqueous plant it, it grows completely inside the water right so for that reason and we are taking uh, hadrilla plant then close it with funnel then end of the funnel is uh, enclosed by test tube okay so whatever gases are produced will not escape from this uh, 
funnel and test tube. Leave it for some time in and place them in sunlight. Okay. After some time, you will observe that some bubbles are started in the test tube and uh, they are reaching the end, end part of the test tube. Now, okay. These gas bubbles are produced after some time. Next, we have to check what gas is produced actually. Right. So, here carefully uh, take out the test tube, close the uh, this end of the test tube with your hand and uh, take out carefully how to check oxygen. So, bring a burning matchstick to this test tube. So, burning matchstick bur burns continuously. When it burns continuously, when there is oxygen, abundant oxygen, then it glows continuously, right? So, the, by this test, we can say that glowing matchstick, we can say that there is presence of oxygen. So, during photosynthesis, oxygen is produced, right? Next, we have structure of chloroplast, right? Structure of chloroplast. For this, uh, according to examination point also, uh, it is very important. So, chloroplast is a three membranous it is consisting of three membranes, right? Outside we have two membranes and inside we have one membrane, uh, which is in the form of stacks, right? So that is called a granum. This complete group is called granum. Single one, if you take, that is called grana thylakoid, right? They spread throughout the chloroplast. If you observe like this, this one, right? Outer part is con having two membranes. Inner also we have one membrane which is in the form of stacks, right? So, single if you take that is called a grana thylakoid and a group if we call it as stroma. Remaining portion is filled with uh, some liquid structure, right? That is called stroma. That is called stroma. Intermediate fluid filled portion is called stroma. It is believed to be responsible for enzymatic reactions. So, what grana is uh, doing? Grana is helping to uh, or uh, trap the solar energy, right, which is helpful for the photosynthesis. So, this grana is capturing the sunlight and it activating this process, right, and uh, this intermediate fluid, which is called stroma, right, this fluid is called stroma. Then, so, after series of chemical reactions, it prepares starch, okay. Whatever we are dot dot structures we are seeing now, those are called starch granules, okay. Next, substances found in chloroplast which capture sunlight are called photosynthetic pigments. They are several, there are several types of photosynthetic pigments involved in the process. Produce organic man, molecules like glucose in plants. Okay, chlorophyll is of two types, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Chlorophyll A is bluish green and chlorophyll B is yellowish green. Okay, this chlorophyll contains uh, magnesium pigment. As we have in our hemoglobin, we are having iron pigment, right? So, which carries oxygen. So, here magnesium, right? So, chlorophyll contains magnesium. Next, 